Hello, welcome to another movie review of mine. Afterwards, please take the chance to visit my website, www.thescenviewer.com, where I have thousands of movie reviews, 60 plus lists of best films per genre, yearly rank lists with top 5 per category going back to 1914, and dozens of miscellaneous lists including TV shows, actor profiles, and top 10 films per actor. The link can be found below. Today we are reviewing Agatha 1979. Gave this movie a rating of 6, was viewed in 2017 and 2022. Agatha Christie, the famous mystery writer, disappeared for 11 days in December of 1926. No explanation was ever offered, hence Agatha presents a theory of what might have happened. The project started out as a documentary for BBC, but the more Kathleen Tarrant uncovered the details of the story, the more feasible it was for producer David Putman to greenlight the transition of a full-length feature film. The Agatha Christie estate was against the whole thing and tried to have it stopped. First of all, it's a sumptuous looking picture. The cinematography is beautiful, which was handled by Vittorio Storaro, who ended up winning the Oscar for Apocalypse Now. During the same year, the costumes and the in interior exterior sets were first rate. As a result, the category, the first category netted Shirley Russell an Oscar nomination. Vanessa Redgrave is perfect for the role, nailing it well to fit the period of the time. She makes the movie work by contemplating the photography. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Dustin Hoffman. As a, as a great actor as he is, it's simply miscast, often looking stiff and inflexible. Also, he has no chemistry with Vanessa Redgrave. There's an awkward dance scene that shows her towering over him. Interestingly, Timothy Dalton gives one of the better performances that I can recall from him. He was awful in two James Bond pictures, but what he did in Agatha is indefinitely better. At the time, Timothy Dalton was in a serious relationship with Vanessa Redgrave, which lasted from 1971 to 1986. Although it's a nice history lesson, the story about the author isn't interesting to follow. The pace is glacial, and by the time things become clear, it's too late. Then the movie ends. All of it can be attributed to Dustin Hoffman for being too difficult on set, causing many rewrites, and letting the film run over the budget and schedule. All in all, having a more developed story while cutting out Dustin Hoffman, Agatha would have been better. Agatha somewhat works, but doesn't succeed on the whole. Straight off the bat, the photography by... Vittorio Storaro is spectacular and therefore Oscar worthy. It's what sustains the film throughout, but the sole nomination went to Shirley Russell for Best Costume Design. To be fair, Vittorio Storaro got his for Apocalypse Now during the same year. Then there's the mystery of Agatha Christie's disappearance for 11 days, December 314. 1926. Nobody knows to this day what happened or why. The film only presents a theory. One plausible explanation is the famed author who was so frugal that it alienated her husband to the point of initiate, initiating an affair with his 25-year-old secretary, Nancy Neal, whom he would later marry. But most likely, Agatha Christie took the time to reevaluate herself and the marriage. There may have been a plan in place to embarrass her husband at the same time in the hopes of getting him back. The abandoned car with Agatha Christie's clothes left in the back seat did happen. Also, the lake was dragged and over 15,000 police officers and volunteers searched the countryside for her body and whatever else. It was the largest manhunt in UK history, with airplanes being utilized for the first time ever. Arthur Conan Doyle once gave a clairvoyant a pair of Agatha Christie's gloves to find out her whereabouts. Agatha Christie did stay in the Old Swan Hotel of Harrogate under the name of Teresa Neal from Cape Town, South Africa, 
and was finally discovered by her husband in the hotel dining room as she walked inside, took her place at the table, and began reading the newspaper which headlined her disappearance. Afterwards, the public reaction was largely negative, thinking the disappearance was a publicity stunt given the large amount of resources that were wasted on her. As for the film, the plot is thin. I'm torn whether Dustin Hoffman was okay or completely miscast. Either way, his character is 100% fictional. Merely providing her looks, Vanessa Redgrave is no better. Their chemistry is nil. However, the rest of the supporting cast, including Timothy Dalton, passes muster. All in all, Agatha is a well-shot period picture that gets me in the mood despite the pointless drama. Thank you so much for joining me for this review. Don't forget to visit my website at www.thecviewer.com.